when you come to draft day for your fantasy football league, have you ever just looked down each player's schedule and just gone to week 16 and 17, assuming that you'll do good enough to make the playoffs and you need good matchups that week? Well, that is what we're going to be discussing today. The best fantasy football playoff matchups, matchups and players. I'm going to give you some insight on who you should be taking based off of who they will play at the end of the year that could possibly either get you into the playoffs or win you your league championship. And as always, be sure to like this video, share this video on social media, and subscribe to this channel. I am Andrew Wilbar. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments related to fantasy football, put them in the comment section. I will answer them on the next video. And today I got, I actually want your guys' advice for me. I have a fantasy football draft on Friday. I don't know when you guys are watching this. I'm recording this on Thursday, so here in Michigan, so tomorrow. I have my big fantasy football draft, and I want to get your guys' advice. What's some last-minute tips that I should do? I do have one question I want to put out. I'm considering taking Patrick Mahomes with a high pick. I'm not going to tell you where it was a high pick, but just we'll leave it at a high pick. Should I, though? Okay, if I draft Mahomes... I really don't even need to draft another running back. I can, I mean, another quarterback. I just need to pick one up the week of his bye week. Um, but for the most part, it being a, this is an 18 non PPR league. So the other thought is I, I could go with a balanced approach, like a lot of people think, you know, go, you know, running back, receiver, maybe if a tight end's there in round three, you know, just balance it all out. Or I could go running back heavy or receiver heavy. I'm not a big fan of the zero running back strategy. That just I just don't think that's going to work this year. But maybe a zero receiver strategy could work. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. A lot depends on who's taken ahead of me. But I want to get your guys' advice. So if you have any fantasy football advice for me, put it in the comment section. And I will read it and hopefully accept your advice. We'll see if it's any good, though. But we're going to get into today's, uh, what we are going to discuss today, uh, which is fantasy football playoff matchups. We're going to start off at the quarterback position. There's two that I'm just looking at week 16, 17 schedules that look really enticing. First is the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, they play Jacksonville in week 15 and the New York Football Giants in week 16. Jacksonville, they lost their top two corners in Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Bouye. Okay, they did bring in C.J. Henderson through the draft. I know they have Ronnie Harrison at safety, a couple other pieces. I believe they still have Miles Jack at linebacker. Of course, Josh Allen is an emerging star on that, uh, at either as an outside linebacker or defensive end. We'll see how they employ him this year. From what I'm hearing, it's going to be more as an, a linebacker, which I believe that's where he's best fitted. We'll see what happens with Yannick Ngakwe. I believe he's still wanting traded. I haven't heard anything differently. But for the most part, this defense still is probably going to have some holes. We saw towards the end of last year, once Jalen Ramsey was traded, they struggled covering opponents' wide receivers. So I think that Lamar Jackson could actually have a heyday. Plus Josh Allen and Yannick Ngakwe, they are pass rushers. They're not contained guys. So Lamar Jackson could be able to run on that defense as well. Plus then if you look at the New York Giants, they're just, they haven't been a good defense for a while. They needed linebacker help. They had a chance to take Isaiah Simmons in the draft. Now, they did need offensive line help. Grand, they need to fix that, and it was probably a good move considering that Nate Solder opted out of the season, so now they really don't have anybody at offensive tackle, so Andrew Thomas will come in and be an immediate starter for them. But with the New York Giants defense, they still, I mean, I'm not sure about, I mean, they don't have, they've lost a lot of their older corners, you know, you got Janoris Jenkins, you know, Rogers Camardi. That was the last time their defense was actually really good. Um, they lack safety depth. They have Jabril Peppers. We'll see if he can emerge, uh, but there's nothing to really get excited about on this team. There just really isn't. There isn't anything there. Uh, so I think that's another good matchup. Of course, Lamar Jackson, you're probably going to start him pretty much every week anyways, unless he is on bye week. But the Seattle Seahawks are the other one. And again, Russell Wilson, you're probably going to start him most weeks. Some people, once you get into that range, they if they have a decent backup, they may play the matchup more often. But Russell Wilson has the Redskins in week six in week 15 and the Los Angeles Rams in week 16. 
And, of course, the Rams, they have Jalen Ramsey, but Marcus Peters left. He was never a really good uh, fit for them. They lost Corey Littleton at linebacker, the linebacking core. They didn't really do anything to replace him. They did bring in Terrell Lewis uh, to help with the pass rush. But outside of Aaron Donald, they don't really have anyone else on the D-line either. So they're still lacking in a lot of areas on this defense. Um, and I believe they you can pass on them. Taylor Rapp had a really nice year. He can play against the run. He's decent in coverage, but he's not super fast. I think DK Metcalf can burn this Rams uh, defense. I believe Tyler Lockett can as well. Both have a lot of speed. I think Russell Wilson's going to be chucking it downfield a lot in this game, and he may be able to put up a big number for you in Fantasy Football Championship Week. Two bad quarterback uh, matchups uh, are the Cincinnati Bengals and Buffalo Bills. Let's start with the Bengals. Now, Week 16, the Texans, honestly, if you look at it on paper, it's not an absolutely awful matchup. They were 16th last year, um, and they still they do have Bradley Roby. But outside of that, they don't have anyone at the cornerback position. Uh, Zach Cunningham, uh, the linebacker position, not going to factor in a whole lot probably into the passing game. We'll see what happens with the defensive line, if they can pressure Joe Burrow, of course being led by J.J. Watt. But week 16, you have to win, or excuse me, week 15, you have to win week 15 before you can get to the fantasy championship game. And Joe Burrow, if you're a Joe Burrow fan, don't get me wrong, I think he could be decent in fantasy football as the year goes on. But he plays the Pittsburgh Steelers, who gave up the fewest fantasy points last year to quarterbacks, if I am correct. Uh, They're going to have another really reliable defense this year. Assuming Joe Hayden doesn't fall off a cliff and Steven Nelson picks up where he was last year, that secondary should be pretty good, and I expect a little bit more from Terrell Edmonds this year as well. Now the Buffalo Bills, we're going to be talking about the Bills a lot. Um, it's several positions because of bad matchups. Towards the end of the year, their schedule's brutal. You have the Steelers. I'm not sure if they play the... No, they don't play the 49ers, but they have a tough uh, NFC opponent they have to play, defense. And then they play Denver and New England, week 15 and 16. Uh, you know, Denver, they still have Simmons there. They brought in Boye. Um, they're going to be really difficult, probably difficult to throw against. I believe they also brought in Kareem Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. He'll, he, they may move him around between uh, safety and corner. Uh, but the Patriots, we talked a lot about how they lost a lot of pieces. In their, as, from a fantasy perspective, their defense isn't going to be as good this year. But their secondary is still good. They still have um, uh, that Jones guy, I, uh, forgetting his first name, uh, Jonathan Jones. Um, you have J.C. Jackson, and of course, Stephon Gilmore, who's probably the best corner in the league right now. Um, still have McCourty, still have some pieces at safety. Um, Kyle Duggar, rookie, may come in and make an immediate impact because he probably will help try to replace the void that Patrick Chung leaves after he opted out. So I believe their secondary is still going to be solid, uh, which means probably you will not want to start Josh Allen weeks 15 and 16. So if you draft Josh Allen, make sure that you're drafting a backup with a good Week 15 and 16 matchup. There's not a bunch of excellent matchups, but at least find something in the middle of the pack. Something, or maybe a defense that maybe was good last year, but lost a lot of pieces through the offseason. You know, you're just going to have to kind of really monitor that situation because that's going to be a horrible, horrible uh, defense, the horrible uh, player that you will not want to start for the last three to four weeks of the year. And I like Josh Allen, and I noticed on NFL.com he's slipping. So if he falls far enough, I may consider drafting him. But now that I look at the schedule, it is daunting. I almost I, Maybe that's why NFL.com just dropped him, because they just had a huge overhaul of their rankings uh, last week. And Josh Allen dropped, which kind of surprised me. But it could be because their schedule is so tough. I don't know if that had a role in it or not, uh, but it definitely raises a red flag for me. Uh, but to the running backs, there's several schedules I want to get into here. We're going to start off with some of the best schedules. First being the Chicago Bears. Now, I've, I am correct. We have the Detroit Lions they play in week 13. Okay, I want to start this a couple weeks early because remember, if you're, you know, that one of those teams, you know, you're about six and six, maybe seven and six, and you need that win or last two wins to get into the playoffs, these are team, you want to look at those week 13, 14 matchups as well. And the Detroit Lions and Houston Texans, they were both among the bottom quarter of the league. 
uh, in terms of uh, holding against the run. Now, they uh, they also lost DJ Reader, who is one of the best run stuffers in the game. So that's not going to help them at all either. I believe they did draft uh, the rookie Ross Blacklock, if I am correct. I believe they did draft Ross Blacklock, but I don't think he's going to help a whole lot in the run game year one. Now, week 15, they play the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this is a team we talked about a lot. They lost a lot of pieces. Now, um, we saw Everson Griffin uh, just get get signed elsewhere. Uh, but from Minnesota, uh, I, I've mentioned Kenny Wilkes before. He'll be good against the run. I think they'll still be okay against the run. Uh, but that loss of Everson Griffin, they did lose some other pieces. Um, but the main thing is the secondary. If I'm looking at this from a standpoint of the secondary, I wouldn't be. I would. I think Allen Robinson is actually in a good position to succeed um, in weeks 15 and 16 for the Chicago Bears, because you look at the Minnesota Vikings 23rd last year. Um, they were kind of in the middle of the pack, towards the better half of the league in terms of playing uh, in terms of pass defense, but. We talked about how they lost all three of their starting corners, um, and that is going to play a huge role. They have Mike Hughes, and that's it. This team is going to be easy to pass on this year, um, and that could aid the Chicago Bears, especially when they're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars Week 16, who we just talked about uh, uh, not that long ago, uh, just a couple minutes ago, after they lost their top two corners. We'll see what C.J. Henderson brings as a rookie, but again, there's nothing proven there, and I believe if Nick Foles is Anywhere what we've seen him two years ago, I think the Bears could be a formidable offense. Not great by any stretch of the imagination, but I believe either Anthony Miller or Allen Robinson can really benefit towards the end of the year and be a really good starter down the line for you fantasy owners out there. The Cleveland Browns, they play the Jets and the Giants. Okay, Giants in Week 15, Jets in Week 16. The Jets don't have anyone in the secondary. I think they drafted someone like in the third or fourth round, uh, but nothing super uh, intriguing for this year. And we just talked about the Giants. They have Jabril Peppers in the secondary, a couple young pieces at corner, and that's it. They should You should be able to throw against them. I think Baker Mayfield could really tee off. But again, we're going towards the running backs here. Um, the Giants, you know, with no Leonard Williams, uh, they needed to fix the defensive line a little bit more, uh, in, I was hoping they would at least in this draft, they didn't do it. The Jets, they did get Quinn and Williams from last year, uh, but didn't really add any pieces, uh, to that line this year. Um, and I'm a little bit skeptical about the Jets defense as a whole, probably bottom three, maybe even bottom five of the league, um, I wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they were the worst fantasy defense. But the Cleveland Browns are a uh, team that you will want to consider. So Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, Week 16, Week 17, I believe both can produce. Kareem Hunt is probably a running back two. Nick Chubb is a running back one for you come down the playoff stretch. The Los Angeles Rams, they play the Jets and the Seahawks um, in weeks 15 and 16, both of them were towards the bottom half of the league last year. The Tennessee Titans, they play the Jaguars in week 14, um, who were one of the worst, um, against the run at at by the end of last year. The Lions, we know them, uh, they weren't as good against the runs we thought they would be. We'll see if the, uh, bringing back Deshaun Hand from injury, if that helps. Maybe Trey Flowers, uh, can get back to being what we saw him in New England. And then the Green Bay Packers, that one's a little bit iffy because they did have some nice moments last year as a defense. They really took a step forward, um, but they really mellowed out by the end of the year, and they were only a mediocre defense. I think Tennessee and Derrick Henry probably can run on him, and like I've said before, I'm not a huge Derrick Henry fan this year, but if you're going by playoff matchups, again, I'm not saying these are definitely guys you have to draft. We're just breaking down the the end-of-the-year schedule, Um, and if that's the strategy you want to use, uh, by all means, go for it. The last one I want to get into... Um, wait a minute, that actually was the last one. Okay, so th- this these are the actual numbers. Green Bay was the fifth worst against uh, uh, running backs last year. The Lions were fourth worst in, uh, in, ru- in rush defense. And the Jaguars were third worst. That's probably the, maybe the most intriguing schedule of them all. So the Tennessee Titans are definitely in a good position. Derrick Henry and Darrington Evans possibly uh, to be able to produce for you towards the end of the year. The rest of their schedule isn't super intriguing, but the end definitely is.
the worst Buffalo Bills. We talked about them with the quarterback position. Zach Moss and Devin Singletary have to go against Denver and New England. New England, I don't think, will be quite as solid this year, but their defensive line still has some nice pieces to be able to stop the run. Pass rush, I'm not so sure. Coverage in terms of linebackers, no. But they can still probably be a solid defense against the run. Denver Broncos, Vic Fangio, uh, always tr- does a pretty good job clogging up the middle, being able to clog up the run. We know what he did in Chicago. We'll see what he does in Denver. Of course, he doesn't have all the pieces at the linebacker position, but we'll see what happens. But this is the bill schedule for the last four weeks. San Francisco. One of the best defenses. Steelers, one of the best defenses. Broncos, probably top 10 defense in New England. We'll see what they are this year. But that is just a really rough stretch. And that is why I think unless you find an excellent steal. Like, okay, if Josh Allen is there for me in round 11, round 12 in my fantasy draft tomorrow, okay, I'm taking them because that's incredible value. I don't care about the schedule that much. NFL.com has really good value on him. Uh, Stephon Diggs, though, I'm probably not going to draft. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to have a horrible year, but shortened off season, new quarterback, new team, probably going to stay away. We'll see about the running backs. I'm a little bit more skeptical on Zach Moss because I was planning on drafting Moss before I looked at the schedule, uh, but he's not going to be able to win me anything. We'll see if maybe he can contribute towards the rest of the year, um, but... They probably have the toughest fantasy schedule probably in all of football. And this isn't just the end of the year. If you look through the rest of their schedule, it isn't that much better. They have a few easy matchups, uh, but not as many as most other teams. The Atlanta Falcons, they go against Tampa Bay and Kansas City, two defenses that I believe you can take towards the end of your drafts, uh, and they can actually hold down the fort for you. Tampa Bay, of course, they have Ndamukong Sue and Vita Vea. Vita Vea is probably the best run stuffer in the entire league right now. Shaq Barrett isn't horrible. Of course, he's more of a pass rusher, but they have all the pieces on the defensive line to be able to stop this running game. Devin White, well, he, of course, he's more of a coverage guy. Excuse me for the yawning, and it's a little bit... A little bit tired a little bit today, but uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I know Todd Gurley, he's going to get a lot of carries, and he has looked explosive. Reports are saying he is walking with a little bit of a limp right now, uh, but he is very explosive. <coughs> I am just not super optimistic about the end of the year. And if you look at Kansas City, Frank Clark, Tiano Pacino, Colin Saunders, who I believe is going to step up this year, Chris Jones. Taco Charlton, they have some really good run-stuffing players on the defensive line. Um, we'll see what Willie Gay and Anthony Hitchens can do um, at the linebacker position. But I think uh, you have to avoid uh, the Falcons probably because of Week 15-16 matchups. Same thing with the Detroit Lions. They play Tampa Bay in Week 16. They play Tennessee Week 15. Um, those are the main running backs. Uh, but I've got to move on because we are running a little bit short on time. So I'm going to move through these quickly. The wide receivers... The Los Angeles Chargers, I've talked about how I am not drafting Mike Williams. I'm not drafting Keenan Allen. Mike Williams should not be drafted at all. But the one thing that is in their favor is a fantasy playoff schedule. They play the Atlanta Falcons, who were horrible last year against the pass. They probably still will be this year. The Las Vegas Raiders, awful against the pass last year, probably will be this year. Now, then they do play Denver. Um... But Denver it was a little bit more inconsistent against the pass last year than they were against the run in terms of fantasy football. They were all bottom five by the end of the year. I think that I don't think Denver will be as horrible this year. I believe the addition of AJ Boulier really improves their defense. Um, but then if you look at the Houston Texans, uh, Indianapolis Colts, and Cincinnati Bengals, week fifteen and sixteen, that's pretty intriguing. The Bengals defense is still going to be horrible. Um, Trey Waynes, I believe, uh, got injured. I'm not sure. Uh, what's going to happen with him, but the only other good corner they have is Will Jackson. They have Jesse Bates at safety, and that's it. Uh, so I believe the Houston Texans wide receivers, you look at Will Fuller, he's becoming a more and more intriguing fantasy option. Of course, we never know by week 16 if he'll even be in one piece. He's always injured by then. Uh, that's another story for another day. Uh, but the worst schedule, I've got to say, is got to be the New York Jets. For wide receivers, and I like Denzel Mims, I like Jamison Crowder, especially in PPR formats, and some people are high on Brashad Perriman as well. Uh, But the Los Angeles Rams, of course, you're going against Jalen Ramsey on one side. Uh, Number two may not be as bad because they don't have a whole lot of depth at corner, Uh, so maybe if you're looking, whoever becomes the Jets' number two receiver on the outside can maybe produce. Uh, They also lost their slot corner. Um, 
Again, I apologize for the name. The name is just slipping me today. Guy that got that flag in the 2018 game against the... Who didn't get called for that pass interference call against the Saints back in 2018. Really uh, really for, kept the Rams going and, of course, knocked the Saints out. That horrible call. Um, the Eagles signed him to a one-year contract. Uh, but they lost him so Crowder could still produce. Uh, but then they play the Browns in Week 16 who I believe Greedy Williams will take a step forward this year, and I believe Denzel Ward is a legit corner who has the versatility to play on the inside and outside. So I would probably say avoid the just wide receivers if you are going in terms of playoff matchups. The last position I want to cover is the tight ends, and we'll try to go through this pretty quickly. The New York Jets, we just talked about the receivers, the tight ends. The Los Angeles Rams last year had the second worst defense in covering tight ends, and the Cleveland Browns were the fourth worst. And, of course, those are the two teams they play in Week 15-16. So I believe Christopher Herndon, who I've mentioned before, I'm pretty sure I have. If I haven't, I don't know what's the what's the matter with me because I do like Christopher Herndon fantasy football this year. I believe he has top 15 fantasy football potential. They seem really excited to get him into the fold. Um, I know Ryan Griffin produced well last year with Sam Darnold. Uh, and Sam Darnold's uh, passer rating was really good when he threw to Griffin. But Christopher Herndon is so talented, and they seem to be really excited to get him involved into their offense again. We'll see if he can get through a full season this time. Uh, the other good matchup is the Seattle Seahawks. The Redskins were the ninth worst against tight ends last year, and the Rams, of course, they play in Week 16. We just talked about them, second worst. And now you... I know they brought in Greg Olson, but Will Disley is the guy. If you're going to take a Seattle tight end, Will Disley is the guy to take. Of course, he was like the second tight end overall in fantasy football before he got injured last year. Russell Wilson th uh, threw a lot to him in the red zone, um, and he has become uh, one who has thrown to the tight ends more in the past few years of his career. Beginning of his career, he did not. We saw Jimmy Graham when he was first traded there. really didn't do anything. Then towards the end of uh, his career, he uh, in Seattle, he started, Russell Wilson started throwing to him more in the red zone. Now DK Metcalf is there, so he has a little bit more receiver help, a receiver that can win in the red zone. But Will Disley is a guy who I still think has some potential. Of course, his ceiling is limited because Greg Olson is there. But Greg Olson has had injury problems before. What if he gets injured? Then we're looking at Will Disley as a, pen, as a potential top 10 fantasy tight end. So don't sleep on Will Disley. I understand if you don't want to draft him. I'm not going to draft him. But I believe he does bring good value, um, especially on the waiver wire. If you have an injury or if you have a player that tests positive for COVID and you need a backup, take a chance on Will Disley because the upside is there if something does happen to Greg Olson. The two worst tight end matchups, the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Jet, the Giants, they were kind of in the middle pack. They were 19th. Um, so they were 19th best. So, or 19th. Uh, mo yeah, they were the 19th best, so that's kind of the middle of the pack. Um but the Jets, they were the twenty they were twenty ninth, which means they were the fourth hardest defense against tight ends. So if you're looking at the Browns, probably Austin Hooper you'll want to avoid. And if you still want to take David Njoku, he doesn't have a whole lot of fantasy uh uh doesn't have a whole lot of impact in fantasy football right now. But I would avoid Austin Hooper. I'm also not a big fan of him this year. I believe they're going to run the ball a lot. And, of course, they still have Odell Jarvis Landry and Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I believe will all have big impacts in the passing game. So I would probably avoid Austin Hooper. Uh, I think that just kind of tips the iceberg a little bit uh, against Austin Hooper. The last one, we've mentioned it. The Buffalo Bills. Okay, Dawson Knox is another tight end. I really like coming out last year of Ole Miss. Very athletic tight end. He made some really nice plays for Buffalo down the stretch last year. But Denver was the second best defense against tight ends, and New England was the fifth best defense against tight ends. So, really, I love the Buffalo Bills. I think that they're going to have a really good year. I think they are a playoff team. I believe they are going to win their division. But I'm telling you, it is driving me crazy because I'm not sure what to do. You guys tell me in the comment section what you think. Can I draft Zach Moss and Josh Allen despite their rough schedules? Let me know in the comment section. My draft is tomorrow. Again, I'm recording on Thursday. So Friday night, I have my fantasy football draft, my big one. 
So I want your guys' advice. What should I do, not just in this situation, but in any situation? The Mahomes uh, scenario that I pointed out earlier in the video um, and anything else that you think I need to do in my fantasy football draft, let me know what I should do. Put it in the comment section. If you have any other fancy questions or comments, put it in the comment section. I will answer it on the next video. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.